Amen. Amen. Si tusimame tu appreciate. Amen. Muhubiri akuja katika jina la Yesu. Tupigie hema kofi hadi afike. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. Tupigie makofi hadi afike. Amen. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ndoliza tu kwa dakika moja ama mbili tu. Chukue tu nafasi hii ya kumwabudu Bwana na kumwambia Bwana unastahili kabla tusikie vile angetaka tuseme katika jina la Yesu. Thank you Jesus. Mwambie Bwana ni asante. Mwambie Bwana moyo wangu natamani kusikia mahusia yako. Sitamani nisikie vile binadamu anasema, ninataka nisikie vile wewe unasema. Ninataka moyo wangu uwe tuned na ili nikaweza kusikia mahusia yako katika jina la Yesu. Father I release myself I release myself oh God Ninajiachilia e Bwana I release my spirit in Jesus name Hatujakuja kwa sababu ya binadamu tumekuja kwa sababu ya wewe Mungu We have come because of you oh Lord Nimekuja ili Bwana nisikie kutoka kwako Oh Bwana kama Ayala ayoniavyo shauku mito ya maji ndivyo moyo wangu unavyokuonea shauku e Bwana Adhuhuri ya leo mfalme jitukuze ndani yangu katika jina la Yesu glorify yourself in the mighty name of Jesus Father we surrender to your presence we surrender to you oh God Mwambie Bwana unajiachilia kwake katika jina la Yesu Sauti ni nyingi lakini unataka kusikia tu sauti yake There are many voices around but you want to hear the voice of God this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus Mm. Oh my god Thank you Jesus I duly cut name we Kande watenda mambo maku Nai tuli kande dunia ni kote
kweli tumesimama hivyo kuna huu wimbo unaosema huniongoza mokozi na ningetaka tushiriki tu kwa pamoja kwa sababu neno ambalo Bwana amelitia ndani ya moyo wangu linahusiana na kuongozwa na roho mtakatifu haleluya haleluya we worship you jesus Uni yongoza mo
Shivyo milele tunakutukuza Adhuhuri ya leo tumejiachilia kwako Tumekiria kwamba wewe ndiye hutuongoza Tumekiria kwamba ukitushika mkono kwamba hatutanungunika maana tunajua tu mapenzini mwako e Bwana Adhuhuri ya leo tunaomba neno lako likawe juu ya kila mmoja wetu Ninashuka chini e mfalme ili ukainuke katika jina la Yesu How I pray the Lord be exalted above every one of us in Jesus name that at the mention of your name O oh Jesus let every knee let every tongue that represented here O oh God bow to your lordship this afternoon in the name of Jesus that at the ministration of your word all the glory returns to you O oh God may this word come to lift those who are down come to make those who are confused find that by direction in the mighty name of Jehovah I am just but a vessel oh god use me for your glory i release myself as a channel oh god that you may use me to speak your oracles in the name of jehovah i release my tongue i release my mind i release my spirit oh god ya kwamba nitumie jinsi upendavyo jitukuza yesu ndani ya miongoni mwetu katika jina la yesu father we worship you we praise and adore you Roho mtakatifu chukua usukani katika jina la Yesu. Take over in Jesus name. Tunakutukuza Bwana. We worship you Lord. We thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Tunaweza kiti katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Namshukuru Bwana kwa nafasi hii ambayo mmepewa na wadad ya kunena. Sichukui tu kama ni kawaida. Ninachukua kama ni privilege. Na ninamshukuru Bwana kwa sababu ninajua kwamba ako na mkate wa kila mmoja wetu na ninaamini ya kwamba hatutatoka vile tulivyoingia katika jina la Yesu. Amen. So ningetaka uinue imani yako na ukamtarajie Bwana, usinitarajie mimi tarajia kutoka kwa Bwana na ninaamini ya kwamba mfalme wa wafalme atatutendea sote Bwana Yesu asifiwe Ningetaka kunena ujumbe ambao Bwana ametia ndani ya moyo wangu na ambao uh, nimeuchukua kwa uzito kwa sababu bado mwaka ni mchanga the year is still young na tunahitaji kusikia vile Bwana anavyotaka tuendelee tumepata neno la muongozo la mwaka huu na Bwana alisema ya kwamba tusinyamaze kwa sababu bado kuna watu wengi ambao angetaka kushughulikia katika nchi yetu katika mji huu na katika familia zetu katika jina la Yesu Bwana Yesu asifiwe haleluya so mwaka huu ni mwaka wa kuhubiri mwambie jirani yako ni mwaka wa kuhubiri yes ni mwaka wa kuhubiri na ni mwaka wa kuleta wengi katika zizi la Kristo Bwana Yesu asifiwe ningetaka kunena kwa kifupi sitachukua muda mrefu a uh, kwa a title that God put in my heart and I'm talking about accurate divine guidance hallelujah accurate divine guidance sijui nikitafsiri hiyo kwa Kiswahili itakuwa namna gani yani mwongozo wa kiungu ambao ni hakika sijui kama nime translate vizuri bwana isasifiwe accurate divine guidance mwongozo wa kiungu ambao ni hakika tuseme tu hivyo bwana Yesu asifiwe na mara nyingi sisi kama binadamu wakati mwaka unapoanza tunafanya vitu tunaita resolution resolution ni ni maamuzi ambayo unasema mwaka huu ningependa kufanya hili ningetaka kuwa mahali pale wengine wanasema mwaka huu nitarudi shule mwaka huu ningetaka kununua ploti ama mwaka huu ningetaka kufanya ndoa mwaka huu ningetaka kuanza biashara you know these are resolutions ni maamuzi ambayo unaofanya katika mwanzo wa mwaka bwana yesu asifiwe 
na ndio maana tumekuwa uh, last week ama Sunday iliyoisha ndio ilikuwa tulimalizia siku 21 za kuomba na kudedicate mwaka huu na tukawa na ibada ya kufana sana ya ku dedicate mwaka huu na pia to be anointed uh, uh, for the year na mambo haya yote bwana amekuwa kitutendea na amekuwa kiashiria mambo mazuri juu ya maisha yetu bwana Yesu asifiwe na ninaamini ya kwamba hizi resolution tunazofanya maybe hata unaweza kuwa haujui umefanya resolution bwana Yesu asifiwe Sijui sote naamini tunaamini tuna, tunaelewa nikisema resolution hayo maamuzi uh, kama vile nimeeleza na wengine wanasema maybe mwaka huu mtoto wangu nitampeleka shule you know so kuna mambo ambayo unapanga mambo ambayo unakuwa umejiandaa kutenda na mara nyingi kama wakristo tunajipata kidogo ikifika ni disemba unaangalia ni nini ulikuwa umesema utafanya na unapata ni kama 90 ama 80% haujafanya Bwana Yesu asifiwe na wengi tunaingia katika hali ya either ni discouragement uh, you know na hata wengine wana resolve ah hata sitafanya hizo resolution tena bwana Yesu asifiwe lakini kuna jambo ambalo uh, linakuwa ni la msaada tunapoelewa jinsi ya kufanya uh, hizi resolution ama kuenenda jinsi ya kuongozwa na roho mtakatifu ama na Mungu katika yale tunayotenda bwana Yesu asifiwe now niseme hivi kuna huyu jamaa mmoja anaitwa Hudson Taylor. Alisema hivi, When we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ni tafsiri kwa Kiswahili. Tunapotenda kazi kwa nguvu zetu, kwa kweli tunatenda kazi kwa nguvu zetu. Lakini tunapoomba, Mungu anafanya kazi kwa niaba yetu. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mimi kunazo nguvu katika maombi. So every time tunakuja uweponi mwa Bwana kuomba, tunapoimbiwa inua mikono yako mwambie Bwana hivi, mtukuze mfalme, mwambie Bwana ninakupenda, sio tu ni jambo la kawaida. Ah uh-uh. there is something that happens in the spirit. Mara nyingi tumefunzwa hapa ya kwamba the spiritual world is more real than the physical. And the spiritual world affects what happens in the physical. Na wakati tunapogundua vile utakapojua jinsi ya kuchukua ushindi katika the spiritual ama bingu la kiroho it will manifest in the physical. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Unajua ukiangalia wakati uh, ugonjo unapotaka kukushika. Let me give you this example. Unaanza tu kusikia kwa umbali. Na na sijui nasikia mwili wangu aje. You know ha- hauelewi lakini unasikia you're not okay. Hizo zinakuwaga ni signals. Then inakuja inalipuka. Na ndio unaanza kujifunza. Na by the way nilikuwa ninasikia sijui aje. Hizo ni signal ulikuwa narushiwa in the spiritual realm. Lakini kama ungekuwa sensitive enough kujua ya kwamba kuna jambo linatendeka katika bingu la kiroho and you rise up. Bwana Yesu asifiwe uinuke na uanze ku claim your healing in Jesus name. Maybe haya mambo hayangetendeka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So ningataka kusema nini? Divine guidance ukiangalia the meaning uh, it has to do with showing the way or direction. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It has to do with showing the way or direction. Na wakati kama huu tunaona mambo mengi yanatendeka. Na sorry for using this example ukiangalia wale ambao ni manabii wa uongo na Biblia imesema ya kwamba we in the last days yes and they will come I was sharing with someone namwambia hakuna jambo unaweza kutenda against it because it has been prophesied watakuja na wataitisha na hata moto kutoka binguni na ule moto utashuka na ukiangalia they draw a very big crowd Bwana Yesu asifiwe na wengi wanaopotelea mle wanatafuta nini suluhisho guidance Mtu anasikia amechanganyikiwa maishani mwake kabisa, anatafuta sasa nitafanya nini? Nitaenenda, nitafanya, nita you know, hayo maswali mengi. Ana anaona maybe huku ninaweza pata msaada. Na ndio unaona wengi wao wanapotelea katika these cults. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Lakini laiti wangelijua zile nguvu ambazo tumepatiwa na the privileges that we have in the kingdom of God. 
hawangepotelea kule na hivyo ndivyo ningetaka kunena kuhusu asubuhi ya leo on accurate divine guidance in the year 2023 bwana yesu asifiwe so kama waaminio tuko na advantage sijui advantage ni kwa Kiswahili ta translate kuwa namna gani hmm? faida yes faida tuko na faida kuu kama waaminio kwa sababu tuko na roho mtakatifu when we have the holy spirit ni kama tuko na an added advantage over the non believers ama ambao hawajaokoka na asubuhi ya leo ningetaka tu niwaonyeshe mambo kadhaa tu na ninaamini yatawafungua macho na tutaweza kuenenda katika mwaka huu tukimtarajia Mungu wala si uwezo wetu Bwana Yesu asifiwe so now katika Biblia ni nani aliyeongozwa ama alipatiwa divine guidance Samueli wa kwanza first Samuel chapter 17 tuanze from verse number 48 uh, to 51 first Samuel chapter 17 verse 48 to 51 and the bible says and it came to pass when the philistines arose and came and drew near to meet david that david hastened and ran towards the army to meet the philistine and david put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and sli- and slung it Uh, smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth so david prevailed over the philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of david therefore david ran and stood upon the philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head uh, therewith and when the philistines saw their champion was dead they fled bwana yesu asifiwe sitaeleza sana lakini tunajua hii story ni ya david na goliath na nikawa nina tafakari sana haya mambo ya daudi na huyu goliath na ukiangalia goliath alikuwa ni jitu literally alikuwa ni jitu mtu wa futi tisa huyo unaweza muita nini si ni jitu bwana yesu asifiwe na ukiangalia daudi this was just a young boy bwana yesu asifiwe yeah I, i tend to think around this time he was around 18 or so wakati alikuwa anafanya haya mambo alikuwa tu ni kijana mdogo na tunaongea kuhusu accurate na nataka usishike hiyo accurate Yaani unagonga ndipo kama unachezaga dart kama pastor Migu anajua anapenda hiyo sana kuna kitu tunaitaga bullseye <laughs> Bwana Yesu asifiwe bullseye wale wanajua dart ni nini ni ile sako ya katikati na hiyo ndio inakuwa na point mingi kabisa kuliko hizi zingine so when we are talking of accurate divine guidance tunanena ya kwamba unaongozwa na Mungu kulenga ambapo ndipo Bwana Yesu asifiwe Now, tukiangalia the odds zenye zilikuwa na hawa watu wawili. Daudi number one alikuwa tu na mawe na kitu kingine tunaitaa kwa kikuyu kegodha. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh, sio fair hiyo ni kigodha. Ile unaweka tu mawe una swing alafu unaachilia. Na ukiangalia Goliath alikuwa na alikuwa na shield, alikuwa na spear. Yaani alikuwa na the whole armor. So nikataka sana nijue historia huyu Daudi. So I did a bit of some digging kwa historia na wanahistoria wanasema wakati huo hiyo verse iliandikwa kulikuwa na hao watu na walikuwa na vaa hivi ukiangalia hapo maana mwisho inasema and they saw their champion wale watu walikuwa na kama Goliath walikuwa napewa hiyo title ya champion shuja bwana Yesu asifiwe na mtu kama huyu uh, wakati kama ule alikuwa amevaa the whole armor kifua chake kilikuwa kimefunikwa hadi huku kwa miguu na alikuwa amevaa mpaka helmet those are the sensitive parts ambazo kama ungetaka kulenga mtu una aim either kwa roho una aim kwa kichwa kwa sababu kimgonga mkono ama mguu hiyo itamuumiza tu kidogo but if you want to hurt the person lazima u aim huku kwa kifua ama kwa kichwa na ukiangalia huyu jamaa vile alikuwa amevaa alikuwa amevaa amefunikwa kabisa but niligundua kitu kimoja 
katika ile helmet alikuwa amevaa there was a small opening on the forehead bwana yesu asifiwe kulikuwa na mwanya uliokuwa umeachwa wazi i believe ndio macho ione na vitu kama vile so ile mwanya nataka kukwambia the odds of hitting that target were very small Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Unajua hii sio kama bunduki ya tutalenga iko na laser direct at ina, inapima alafu ina shoot. Uh-uh. You are using your hand na unaachilia. So chances of missing are very high. So ninataka uone ule muujiza uliokuwa katika vile Daudi alivyofanya. I'm talking about curate. Na ukiangalia zile verses ziko hapo nyuma, Daudi alimwambia nini? Unanijia kwa panga na the javelin na hizi vitu zingine zote but i come to you in the name of the lord bwana yesu asifiwe na sisi kama wa kristo this is what we are supposed to do wakati daudi alipo realize ya kwamba i have an added advantage over goliath na alipochukua the sling na akaachilia the spirit of god guided that stone na ikagonga the most vulnerable point ambayo ilikuwa imeachwa wazi hakugonga mara mbili aligonga mara moja na biblia inasema nini the stone sank ile mawe ikaingia kwenye skull huyo jamaa hakuwa na lingine and he fell face forward akafa accurate divine guidance bwana yesu asifiwe niwapatie mfano mwingine tuangalie katika kitabu cha second kings chapter 7 uh, tuanze from verse number 3 to verse number 8 Second Kings chapter 7 from verse 3 to 8 And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate and they said one to another until we die If we say we will enter into the city then the famine is in the city and we shall die there and if we sit still there we die also uh-huh. If we sit still here we die also Now therefore come let us fall and to the host of the Syrians if they save us we live we shall live and if they kill us we shall but die and they rose up in the twilight uh, to go unto the camp of the Syrians and when they were come unto the uttermost part of the camp of this of, of, of Syria behold there was no man there the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us therefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their uh, asses even the camp as it was and fled for their life and when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp they went into the tent and did eat and drink mm-hmm. and carried then silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thens also and went and hid it acha tumalizie pale wakati huu katika Israel kulikuwa kuna kiangazi na wakati huu kiangazi kilikuwa kibaya because ukisoma hapo nyuma uh, kuna kesi ambayo wamama wawili waliamua tutachinja watoto wetu tuwakule na moja akasema tutaanza na wangu leo kesho tutakula wako na wakati wa kwanza alikula huyu mwingine akaficha wake so ilifika ni wakati wa kumchinja inakuwa amemficha so kaenda kumlilia mfalme na mfalme akawaambia Mungu asipowasaidia mimi nitawasaidia namna gani Bwana Yesu asifiwe na wakati huo mfalme akatumana kwa nabii Elisha na akambia nabii Elisha wewe ndio umesababisha haya yote na hivyo nitakuua Bwana Yesu asifiwe na Elisha akaachilia unabii akasema kesho masaa kama haya kutakuwa na utele wa chakula katika nchi ya Israeli Bwana Yesu asifiwe accurate divine guidance sasa the story tumesoma hapa lile neno ambalo Elisha aliwachilia in the spiritual realm lilikuja likafikia hawa waliokuwa na ukoma wanne na wakaamua kwa sababu wao wanafikiria waliamua lakini ukisoma hapo nyuma kuna unabii ulikuwa umeachiliwa Bwana Yesu asifiwe haleluya na wakasema hivi tukikaa hapa tutakufa tukiingia huku ndani njaa itatuua si twende angalau huko kwa hawa wa, wa Syria na tutakapofika huko wakituua tutakufa wakituacha tuishi tutaishi hawakujua kulikuwa na jambo lingine nyuma na ukitaka kujua vile angalia ni nini kilichofanyika 
Watu waine Mungu alimagnify miguu yao ikawa ni kama elfu na maelfu ya majeshi. Na wakati wa the Syrians walisikia vile wakapotea. So waliwacha kila kitu mle. Dhahabu, silver, chakula, nguo, everything waliwacha pale. So hawa majamaa walifika kule wakakula wakashiba. Sasa wakaanza kufanya kitu tunaita looting. Wakachukua zile nguo, wakachukua dhahabu wanaenda kuficha. Lakini wakakaa wakasema kile tunafanya sio kizuri. Wacha twende tuambie ndugu zetu kule. Na ile habari ikamfikia mfalme. Na mfalme alikuwa na doubt. Akasema hapana, tunajua vile wamefanya. Wanaenda kutoka kwa kampu waende wajifiche ndio tukiingia wakuje wachome mji wetu. Akasema hapana, tuma watu. So kulikuwa kumebaki sijui ni farasi wa nne. Mfalme akatumana akasema endendeni muangalie. Wakaenda hadi the next village wakaona kwa kweli hakuna watu. Wakarudi wakamwambia mfalme, hakuna watu. Kwa kweli wametokomea. So ndio wakatuma watu wakaenda in the Syrian camp. Wakachukua chakula na wakakuwa na mambo yale mazuri. Sasa ule jamaa aliyekuwa ameleta uh, uh, ujumbe wa mfalme kwa nabii Elisha, aliambiwa hivi, utaona kwa macho yako lakini hautaonja kwa ulimi wako. Wakati watu walikuwa naingia kwenye city, walimkanyaga pale akafa. Nataribu kusema namna gani? Wakati Mungu anakuongoza, you will never miss the mark. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. You will never miss the mark. Good. Hizo ni the Old Testament. Sasa tuende kwa New Testament. Tuangalie ni nani mwingine aliyeongozwa. The book of Luke chapter 5 tuangalie verse 9 verse 5 to 9 Luke 5 5 to 9 Biblia inasema hivi And Simon answering said unto him Master we have toiled the night all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net brake and they beckoned unto their partners which were in their other ship that they should uh, come and help them and they came and filled both ships mm-hmm. okay just a minute hey. and they filled both sh- uh, both the ships so that they began to sink wacha tufikishe hapo ukiangalia wakati huu Simon Peter alikuwa amefanya kazi ya kuvua samaki usiku kucha na wakati umefika asubuhi Biblia inasema ukisoma hapo nyuma walikuwa anafanya the last stage of fishing ambayo inakuwaga ni kuosha zile nyavu washing the nets inamaanisha umemaliza kazi ya siku uende ukapumzike kesho asubuhi uraukie uendende kazi nyingine Bwana Yesu asifiwe wakati Yesu alitumia merikebu ya huyu Simioni akamaliza kuhubiri na kuaddress wale watu akamwambia Simoni fanya hivi angusha neti zako ukavue Naye Simoni akamwambia hivi, "Yesu, ndio unaniambia, lakini tumekuwa tukifanya hivyo usiku mzima hatujapata kitu. Lakini kwa sababu umenena, nitafuata maagizo yako." Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yesu hakumwambia ati aende kwa ziwa lingine ama amwambie sijui ingia ndani kidogo, alimwambia hapo hapo tu uko. Kwa hiyo ziwa yenye ulikuwa unasema ati usiku mzima haujapata kitu, weka nyavu zako pale. What the Bible says? walijaza meli mbili Bwana Yesu asifiwe I'm talking about accurate divine guidance Bwana Yesu asifiwe Kuna mambo nilianza kwa kusema that we have an advantage as believers kwa sababu tumeona the three examples nimepeana kwa sababu ya muda sitaenda sana kuna examples nyingi ningepeana lakini kwa sababu Mungu ametupatia these advantages. Mambo tunafaa kufanya kama wakristo na inashangaza watu wa ulimwengu. Because we are the source of solution. Sisi kama wakristo tunazo suluhisho za shida ambazo ziko katika ulimwengu huu. Wakati fulani nikahubiri hapa kuhusu you know the 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 different things ama the abilities ama awakening the giant within you yale mambo ambayo the potential ambayo Mungu ameweka ndani ya kila mmoja wetu na wakati huu tunaongozwa na roho mtakatifu 
na kuna mambo ambayo Bwana angetaka kutimiza ndani ya Wakristo na ndani ya taifa hili na ndani ya ulimwengu huu kupitia sisi tunaomjua na tunaomwabudu Bwana Yesu asifiwe Noanda Bwana akaniambia kuhusu ujumbe huu Now kuna mjamaa fulani anaitwa Strive Masiwa He is the CEO and founder of Econet. Wale wamesikia Econet. Kuna wakati Econet Wireless ilikuwa inaingia Kenya na kukawa kuna mambo mambo mengi vile haikuingia. Then bado kuna kampuni yake inasambaza internet inaitwa Liquid Telecom. This guy is born again. Nimefuatilia vile alivyoongozwa na Mungu kufanya uwekezaji. Now I'm talking about money. Haya mambo yote unaona wakati Simon walijaza zile meli mbili si eti walikuwa wanabeba hizo samaki wakakule samaki zilikuwa zienda za kufanya nini za kuuza ni biashara so you can imagine the kind of money these people made that day bwana yesu asifiwe one time nilikuwa ninaambia mtu the gospel is free that is very true but the means of getting the gospel across is very expensive Bwana Yesu asifiwe. That is why we need money. Tunahitaji fedha katika ulimu, uh, katika the kingdom ili tukaweza kufikia watu maelfu na maelfu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Haleluya. Haleluya. Kama unabarikiwa nipongee mkono katika jina la Yesu. Kuna jambo tu ningetaka tujue hivi. Hata ingawa tunafanya mipango, ukiangalia katika kitabu cha Proverbs Chapter number 16 verse number 3 Just put that one for us there is something i want to uh, draw us to Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be what Hebu tuwekelee kwa Kiswahili tuwekee kwa Kiswahili tuone kama itakuwa ehe mkabidhi Bwana kazi zako na mawazo yako yatafanya nini yatadhibitika kwa sababu kila jambo katika maisha haya huanza na wazo everything begins with a thought kuna mtu alikaa akasema by the way badala ya sisi kuwa tukishout tu until sauti inakuwa imepotea si tunaweza tengeneza kitu inaitagwa microphone na speaker mtu anaweza ongea bila ku strain si ni mtu tu alifikiria the right brothers wakakaa wakasema na hizi ndege zina fly huku na kwa nini binadamu tusifanye hivyo everything begins with a thought Bwana Yesu asifiwe kila jambo huanza na wazo kila kitu ambacho unaona hata kwa hili kanisa kuna mtu alikaa akafikiria na by the way tunaweza tengeneza kanisa linakaa one, two, three. na hiyo ndio unasikiaga architects wanafanya they make a plan Bwana Yesu asifiwe that is a thought put down on paper and then it is actioned and it becomes reality Bwana Yesu asifiwe so ninasema nini wakati unapomkabidhi bwana mawazo yako the plans zenye umeweka za mwaka huu yale mambo ungetaka akutimizie ama utimize katika mwaka huu biblia inasema mkabidhi nani bwana kazi zako na mawazo yako yatafanya nini yatadhibitika and this is the secret to making it in this life Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Unapoanza na Mungu, uko hakika ya kwamba lazima atamalizia kile alichoanzisha. Biblia inasema ya kwamba he is faithful who began the good work in us. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. He will bring it into what? Accomplishment. Kwa sababu yeye ni mwaminifu. Kile ambacho huanzia lazima atakimalizia. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Haijalishi hili jambo linakaa kubwa namna gani Wakati David alikuwa anasimama na Goliath I'm sure kuna jambo lilikuwa na mawazo lilikuwa linamwambia huyu jamaa atakumaliza Na hata ukiangalia zile dhihaka ambazo Goliath waliachilia kwa Daudi alimuuliza mimi ni umbo unakuja na, na jiti na kijiti Am I a dog that you come to me with a stick Akasema I'm going to get your body and feed it to the birds of the air Yaani alikuwa na mdhihaki hakujua ya kwamba huyu alikuwa amekabidhi mawazo yake kwa Mungu Bwana Yesu asifiwe There is something great about committing your plans to God Hallelujah Ninapomalizia let me give you four ways of how to acquire ama to receive accurate divine guidance 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nimesema leo sitawabo. Najua kuna mambo mengi mbele yetu. Number one, Be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Tukiangalia katika kitabu cha Luke chapter 12 verse number 11 and 12. Luke 12, 11 and 12. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Luke 12, 11 and 12. The Bible says, And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yesu alikuwa na address wanafunzi anawaambia mtakapoletwa mbele ya makupani na mambo kama yale msijaribu kufikiria mtasema nini Unajua hiyo wakati ndio mtu anaanza sasa nitaongea aje nitasema nini Aa, alisema nini utapatiwa maneno utakayosema wakati huo huo Amen Kwa hivyo kama tunaoamini lazima tuwe sensitive kwa Roho Mtakatifu na ndiposa nilisema we have an added advantage. Bwana Yesu atukuzwe. Haleluya. Haya, tuangalie ingine John 14:26. John 14:26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you underline that teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i said unto you kazi ya roho mtakatifu ni kutufundisha na wakati mwingi tunajipata kwa mashida kwa sababu we do not listen to the holy spirit bwana yesu asifiwe if you want to be guided by god uko na decision unataka ku make ninataka kuwekeza pesa zangu ama nataka kununua shamba mahali fulani wakati umeenda kuomba begin listening to the spirit mwambie bwana nina hili wazo la kununua shamba mahali fulani hebu nieleze is this the right place ama anayenuzia is this a genuine person na una, utakaposikiza kuna wakati roho mtakatifu atakwambia a a usinunue na wakati mwingi anaposema hivyo tunasema ai mungu huyo sio wewe <laughs> bwana yesu asifiwe kwa sababu tunajiongoza kwa fikra zetu now David is one man. His scriptures nitakupatia tu. Daudi alikuwa na mazoea ya ku inquire from the Lord. Maybe we can just read uh, this one First Samuel chapter 23 tusome from verse 1 kuendelea chini kidogo very quickly ndio tuweze kuona uh, what God said. First Samuel 23 verse 1. Then they told David saying, Behold the Philistine fight against Kila, Kila and they rob uh, their threshing floors. Therefore David skia hiyo did what? Eh tusome hiyo and David inquired Aha uh-huh. Tusome kwa pamoja tuanze tena mara moja Therefore David inquired of the Lord saying shall I go And the Lord said unto David go and smite That is what God said Ukiangalia mahali pengine sitaki kuendelea sana you can write from verse 1 all the way to 11 Ukiangalia huko katikati Daudi alikuwa anauliza Mungu na kuna mara nyingine Bwana alikuwa anamwambia unaona hapa ameambia nini enenda Kuna pengine alifika akamwambia ndio utaenenda lakini hautapitia ile njia ulipitia zunguka Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa sababu why we make losses hata wale wako kwa biashara wakati mwingine tuna hili wazo la kufanya lakini haumuulizi Mungu maybe it is not yet time for you to do that kind of business na roho mtakatifu atakwambia subiri bwana Yesu asifiwe si hii mwaka tuwe sensitive haleluya wangapi watakuwa sensitive kwa mwongozo wa roho mtakatifu haleluya haya point number two. of the word of god bwana Yesu asifiwe Ukiangalia katika Joshua chapter 1 and verses number 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. Mwongozo wa Mungu unakuwa ni wa dhamana sana. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, 
but you shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shall make thy way what prosperous and then thou shall have good success i believe kila mtu anataka hiyo you want to be prosperous and number two, you want to be successful neno la mungu the word of god neno la mungu lina contain ile mbegu ya kukufanya ukue successful tuangalie psalms 119 from verse 104 and 105 psalms 119 104 and 105 psalms 119 Hallelujah. Though through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Thy word neno la Mungu ni nuru ya ya njia yangu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If you want to walk successfully this year train yourself to stay in the word of god bwana yesu asifiwe hallelujah unajua kusoma neno la mungu inakuaga ni ni rahisi na ni ngumu kwa sababu mtu atashika gazeti na atasoma yote lakini ukimpatia biblia atasoma tu one chapter wana ameanza kusinzia <laughs> bwana yesu asifiwe na utachukua kitabu kingine motivational book utasoma yote lakini ukishika neno la mungu una Let us be diligent in reading the word of God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Number three, ninamalizia. Seek godly counsel from the spiritual authority God has put in your life. Seek godly counsel from the spiritual authorities God has put in your life. Yaani endea ushauri kutoka kwa uh, viongozi wa kiroho ambao bwana amekupatia maishani mwako bwana Yesu asifiwe tukiangalia katika kitabu cha wafalme wa pili second kings ukisoma uh, chapter 6 from verse 1 all the way to 7 uh, wakati huu ni wakati the sons of the prophets walitaka kuenda kupanua mahali walipokuwa wakitaka kukaa na wakaja wakamwambia Elisha mahali tunapokaa ni padogo na akamwambia tungetaka tu uwe nende nasi tukakate miti pamoja na wakamsihi sana wakamwambia tafadhali twende na wewe na ukisoma tu pale chini ya paraphrasing kwa sababu ya muda Biblia inasema mmoja wao alipokuwa akikata mti shoka likaanguka kwenye maji decisions Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa sababu nabii wa Bwana alikuwa pale alimuuliza tu shoka limeanguka wapi akamuonyesha alichukua tu kijiti akakoroga maji shoka ikalea juu ya maji Bwana Yesu asifiwe godly what cancel Bwana Yesu asifiwe ukiangalia pia second kings chapter 4 from verse number 1 all the way to 7 again mm-hmm. second kings 4 from verse 1 to 7 Ukiangalia ilikuwa ni story ya mke wa one of the prophets. Wakati huyu nabii alipokufa akawacha madeni na waliokuwa wanamdai wakaja kuchukua watoto wake. Na Biblia inasema badala ya kujiua na kwenda kufanya mambo mengine, huyu mama alimwendea nabii, akamwambia tafadhali, niko na shida ya pesa. Nika akamuuliza nitafanyaje? Alimwambia hivi, alimuuliza uko na nini nyumbani mwako? Akasema nina mafuta akamwambia enda uombe uh, container sama nyungu jazz mingi katika majirani wako na wakati utakapofanya vile ujifungie wewe na watoto wako mle ndani then anza kumimina yale mafuta kwenye zile jazz na akafanya hivyo akajaza zile zote mpaka ya mwisho ilipojaa wakati aliuliza kuna nyingine akaambiwa hapana mafuta yakaacha kumwagika akarudi tena kwa nabii akamuuliza nifanye namna gani akamwambia chukua hayo mafuta enda uza ile pesa utapata lipa madeni na ile itabaki live on it godly cancel bwana yesu asifiwe mungu hajaweka wachungaji wetu wakaage tu hapo there is wisdom godly wisdom ambayo ameweka ndani yao kuna wakati fulani 
Mchungaji alikuwa na share na mimi ananiambia kuna mtu alikuja kumuliza advice uh, kama anunue shamba mahali fulani. Na wakati mchungaji alipokuwa akiomba Mungu akamuonyesha asinunue mahali pale kwa sababu atatapeliwa. He will be conned. Na wakati kama ule kukawa kuna mambo yale na just as vile tu Mungu alikuwa amemuonyesha mchungaji ikawa ni vile. Bahati nzuri hakuwa amepeana pesa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. So unaona hiyo ingekuwa ni hasara mara mbili. Unapoteza shamba ni unapoteza pesa. Amen. So it is good to seek counsel from the authorities that God has put over your life. Mwendende tu muulize kama vile tu huyu mama alifanya in chapter 4 of 2nd Kings. Alienda akamuuliza nitafanya nini? Akamuuliza uko na nini kwako? Akamwambia nina mafuta, akamwambia haya, enda uchukue jazz, jazz zile na mafuta. Then aka, akarudi tena kwake akamule nifanye nini tena? Akamwambia uza yale mafuta. Na akapata pesa, akalipa yale madeni, anamshua kutoka pale haku strago, aliweza ku raise watoto wake vizuri. Kwa nini ali appreciate the authorities ambao Mungu alikuwa ameweka juu ya maisha yake? Hallelujah. Napomalizia number four. Be sensitive to the dreams you get especially when you are praying for direction from God nirudie tena be sensitive to the dreams you get especially when you are praying for direction from God najua watu wengi hawadhamini ndoto but Mungu hunena kwa njia nyingi tumesema roho mtakatifu tumesema neno la Mungu tumesema manabii wake ama watumishi wa Mungu ambao ameweka maishani mwetu na sasa ya inne ninasema nini ndoto Bwana Yesu asifiwe ukiangalia katika kitabu cha Matthew chapter 2 verse number 13 Matthew chapter 2 verse number 13 um, Amen And when they were departed behold the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream skia hiyo saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until i bring thee word for herod will seek the young child to destroy him wakati huu uh, kuna incidences mbili pia kuna chapter 1 of matthew verse 19 and uh, verse 19 to 24 uh, this in his story too nimechukua tu one example ya joseph ambaye alikuwa ni baba wa yesu okay Tunamjua li Yesu alikuwa conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit but he was the husband to Mary. Na Biblia inasema wakati Joseph ali discover ya kwamba Mary was pregnant alitakutaka kumwaibisha lakini alifanya hivi kwa kisiri akataka aondoke aenende. What happened? The Holy Spirit appeared in the dream. Yaani Mungu alimnenea katika ndoto. Akamwambia yule mtoto ni wa kiungu na usiogope kumchukua Mary as your wife. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Direction came through what? Dream. Angalia tena, hiyo tumesoma chapter 2 verse number 13. Kama Joseph hangekuwa sensitive, Yesu angeuliwa before the time came. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Wakati tunamuomba Mungu atuongoze, tunaambia Mungu tafadhali, ningetaka ku make decision, nitafanya namna gani? Wakati mmoja nakumbuka I was faced with such, na nikawa ina dilemma, si, sijui nifanye jambo gani na nakumbuka wakati ule at the height of ile calamity nikapata ndoto na katika ile ndoto nilijiona mimi <laughs> bwana Yesu asifiwe nikajiona mimi na nilikuwa nina make decision katika ile ndoto lakini it was very easy kwa sababu nilikuwa unajua katika ndoto ni kama umeinuliwa so nilikuwa ninaona mwisho wa lile jambo nilikuwa ninataka kufanya so it was very easy for me to make the decision in the dream. Na wakati nilipo amka, nikakumbuka nikajiuliza haya na nilikuwa ninaota nini. Then nikaangalia ile situation nilikuwa in physical and I'm like wow. Yaani Mungu amenionyesha vile ninafaa kufanya kupitia nini? Kupitia ndoto. So there are sometimes God will speak to you in a dream. Wakati mwingine tulikuwa tu enenda safari na kumbuka tulikuwa tuenende na my brother Kevin. Na huo usiku kukawa kuna pingamizi nyingi lakini mimi nilichukulia tu lightly nilichukulia tu viraisi nikaota tumepata mashida ya gari tumepata it was a bad dream lakini mimi nilipoamka 
si kuchukulia ma si kutilia maanani he wacha tuenende hiyo safari <laughs> yale maneno yalitupata bwana yesu asifiwe tulisumbuka kusumbuka kabisa na ndipo sa in the hate of everything ni roho mtakatifu akanikumbusha ile ndoto akaniambia laiti ungesikiza nilichokuwa nikikuonya bwana yesu asifiwe it is possible to avert danger it is possible to make tough decisions when you lean on the guidance of the holy spirit bwana yesu asifiwe wakati mwingine unapata tu ndoto na hautilii maanani that's why it's very important ukiamka asubuhi usiamke tu kama umeanza shughuli a a take some time ebu meditate umeota nini because sometimes utapata mungu amekunenea na haujui bwana yesu asifiwe wewe unangangana huku kwa maombi kwa maombi kwa maombi unaenda kwa mchungaji unasoma neno kumbe mungu alishakunenea kwa ndoto i know sasa hizi ninapoongea kuna roho mtakatifu anakuletea zile ndoto kuna ndoto uliota na ukachukulia tu hivi hivi lakini sasa hizi the spirit of god is reminding someone kuna jambo liniuliza na hilo jambo ama jibu lililikuwa katika hiyo ndoto bwana yesu asifiwe sijui ni wangapi tumepitia mambo kama yale na umechukulia tu kimzaha i'm talking about accurate divine guidance ni wangapi wangetaka kuwa successful wakati tunahesabu eh, tunapofanya crossover ya mwaka wa 2024 bwana yesu asifiwe uh, unachukua mahesabu yako na unaona kwa kweli nilikomit haya mambo kwa Mungu na Mungu akawa mwaminifu akaniongoza sijui ni wangapi leo ni tarehe ni sande ya kwanza ya mwezi wa pili we still have like 10 more months huko mbele yetu na ninaomba ya kwamba Mungu akatuongoze Mungu akatusaidie katika jina la Yesu ili tutakapofika pale if it was an investment you wanted to make sikiza ni nini roho mtakatifu anakwambia there are times utataka unaona kabisa hii deal ni mzuri deal mzuri kabisa lakini unapoomba roho mtakatifu anakwambia mm mm don't bwana yesu asifiwe why na zingine one thing god alikuwa ananifunulia when you trust in god unapo mungu anapokuongoza unaweza fanya investment moja ambayo inafanya ripple effect ya karibu miaka mitano bwana yesu asifiwe haleluya kuna jamaa alinunua shamba mahali pa fulani ninapomalizia God had directed him aende anunue shamba ma, alikuwa anataka kuinvest na Mungu akamuongoza aende anunue shamba mahali fulani lakini kwa macho ya mwili palikuwa ni mahali hakuna development yani kwa kikuu tunasema ni kiwero yani hakuna development yoyote wakati aliponunua pale kwa sababu alitaka kumfuata Mungu mwaka moja down the line serikali ika discover kulikuwa kuna minerals pale Bwana Yesu asifiwe na kwa sababu alikuwa amenunua ile ardhi kihalali the government had to buy the land back from him Bwana Yesu asifiwe na zile pesa walizompatia my goodness Bwana Yesu asifiwe na ndio akakaa akafikiria kama singefuata mwongozo wa Roho Mtakatifu ningekuwa wapi There are some decisions Mungu atakuongoza kufanya in your senses unaona hai make sense kabisa lakini unaposikiza roho mtakatifu anakuambia pana fanya hivi fanya hivi usibishane follow bwana yesu asifiwe wengine roho mtakatifu anakuongoza anzisha biashara fulani unasema hapana sijui nitafanya aje sijui nitaanza namna gani but god will guide you bwana yesu asifiwe Nikauliza tu tusimame kwa miguu yetu kwa dakika moja because as I am talking I feel the spirit of God moving na anaongoza watu wengine katika kuna mambo umekuwa ukiomba hizo siku ishirini na moja na haujapata jibu and I can feel the spirit of God saying he's quickening ana quicken ana harakisha yani yale majibu yanaanza kuingia hata kama utasikia ni kama ni sauti Unasikia ni kama ni sauti ndani yako inakwambia fanya hivi ama wengine usiku wa leo na wiki hii mtaanza kuona ndoto you will start having dreams na unashindwa hizi na maanisha namna gani a ah, ah, be sensitive soma neno la Mungu na unapata unapata ufunuo fulani ambao haukuwa nao na Mungu anaanza kukuongoza tusimame tu kwa miguu yetu katika jina la Yesu 
We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Tunakushukuru Bwana kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu God. Oh, Father, we thank you. Eh Bwana, tunakushukuru. Na si ufungue tu kinywa chako kwa dakika moja katika jina la Yesu. Mwambie Bwana ningetaka uniongoze. Singetaka kufanya hasara mwaka huu. Ninapoenda kununua stock, eh Bwana, si uniongoze tu nionyeshe ile ninafaa kununua ambayo italeta ama wateja watakao furahia katika jina la Yesu. Kama ni investment ya mashamba na yale mengine, zile biashara ambazo tumekuwa tu, ama ni kazi ambazo tungetaka kuajiriwa, eh Bwana, tunaomba katika jina la Yesu tunapofanya zile application, si utuongoze eh Roho Mtakatifu. Na si ufungue tu kinywa chako katika jina la Yesu kanisa. Popote ulipo mwambie Bwana niongoze. Niongoze katika jina la Yesu. Sitaki kujiongoza mwenyewe kwa sababu nitakapo the Bible says that the arm of flesh will fail you. The arm of flesh will fail you. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Eh hey, Bwana si niongoze. Niongoze. Nitakapopata fedha za kuwalipia watoto wengine karo katika jina la Yesu. Eh hey, mfalme niongoze kufanya decisions ambazo zitakuwa ni za faida wala sio za hasara. Oh Jesus. Na si ufungue tu kinywa chako popote ulipo. Open up your mouth. Nataka kusikia ukiomba na kumwambia Bwana nisaidie katika jina la Yesu. Help me oh God, help me oh God. Help me oh God, nisaidie Bwana katika jina la Yesu. Daidia muadhani to make the right decisions in Jesus name. I want you to guide me in the decisions I will make about my life this year. Ya kwamba Bwana utatuongoza, utatuongoza katika jina la Yesu. I pray for divine guidance oh God. Ya kwamba sita jua hasara ni nini? Ya kwamba sita make wrong ifu. Ninaomba eh Bwana mashataribu sata katika jina la Yesu. Katika jina la Yesu katika jina la Yesu niongoze he bwana popote ni enda po hadi siku ya mwisho Mwambie Bwana niongoze katika jina la Yesu niongoze katika jina la Yesu maana nitashindwa nitakapoenenda peke yangu katika jina la Yesu I need to be successful oh God ninahitaji msaada wako Bwana ninahitaji kibali cha kumfalme katika jina la Yesu katika jina la Yesu We worship you in the name of the Lord ambia Bwana akupe maono akupe discernment spirit for this year as we continue as we continue to preach the word of God Mungu akujalie. Mungu akupe roho wa mtakatifu ambaye ni wa discernment katika jina la Yesu. Thank you dear Father. Give us an accurate divine connection dear Lord katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tunakupenda, tunakuabudu. Tuasema hatuna Mungu kama wewe. Winuliwe upeo sifa na utukufu baba yangu katika jina la Yesu. Inua mikono zako juu. Surrender before the Lord kwa sababu unapoinua mikono yako ni kuambia bwana wewe hauna jambo lolote lako god take control god take control upon your life in the name of the lord jesus mighty and everlasting father in jesus name we have come before your presence this morning this afternoon to thank you to exalt you lead us our redeemer as we continue my father going ahead with the mission that you 
give us the end of the year and the beginning of this year that we shall speak and not be silent because in this uh, city you have many people that belong to you and you want us my father to speak to them to preach to them oh God give us a divine guidance katika jina la Yesu katika jina la Yesu we cannot make it without the holy spirit the help of the holy spirit we need the holy spirit of god tunahitaji roho wa bwana ili atuongoze katika jina la Yesu pray for one minute pray for two minutes ambia bwana kuongoze katika jina la Yesu usipate mkosi usiingie katika mambo ambaye haujakusudia lakini uenende kadri ya mapenzi ya Mungu katika jina la Yesu baba wa rehema Mungu mtakatifu twanyenyekea mbele za kiti chako cha enzi tunapokushukuru kwa ajili ya manafadhili zako bwana wewe umefanya ume, tuone mwezi wa pili uliye tupeleka mwezi wa kwanza januari hata mwezi wa pili shall be with us mwezi wa tatu shall be with us to the end of the year oh god and lord we shall do whatever that you have called us to do at in this year katika jina la yesu asante baba wangu na kushukuru na kuabudu bwana katika jina la yesu asante asante Thank you thank you Lord. Thank you thank you Lord. Shukuru bwana for two minutes. Ambia bwana ni asanti. Asanti Jehovah God. Asanti kwa wema wako. Asanti kwa uponyaji. Asanti kwa uokovu. Asanti kwa kuinuliwa. Asanti kwa roho wako mtakatifu ambayo mwaachilia juu ya maisha yetu. Atuongoze katika jina la Yesu ninaomba mfalme wa ajabu walioingia katika mlango hii wakiwa wagonjwa bwana uwaponye wakiwa wameenda chini la hozao bwana wainue wakiwa wamechanganyikiwa bwana kubari katika jina la Yesu kuonekana katika maisha yao katika jina la Yesu asante mfalme wa falme twakutukuza twakuabudu tembea nasi mfalme wa ajabu hatuwezi peke yetu hatuwezi 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 we cannot make it alone we cannot even walk a step alone without you we need you king of glory may you give us the divine guidance katika jina la Yesu katika jina la Yesu asante kwa sababu ya mikono hizi zimeinuliwa bwana mtakatifu na mwaminifu na waachilia baraka zako na waachilia neema yako na waachilia bwana wa rehema ili ukawaifadhi ili ukawarinde katika jina la Yesu together with them they are family members oh god who has no who are at home others are far from here my god and my master may you bless them oh god may you be exalted in the midst of them katika jina la Yesu asante jehovah mungu wa rehema tunakupenda tunakuinua twasema ni asante katika jina la Yesu Hallelujah. Uko hapa ujaokoka ungependa kuokoka. You are here, you're not born again. Ungependa kupokea Yesu kama eh, eh, kimbilio la maisha yako. Inua mkono wako juu kama uko pale. Tuombe pamoja na wewe ili Mungu akuongoze katika mwaka hii. Ili Mungu akuongoze katika mambo zako. Uko hapo ujaokoka, unasema muhubiri niombe nipate kuokoka. Just raise your hand high up katika jina la Yesu in the name of Jesus Christ kama hakuna bwana mtakatifu tunainua mikono zetu tunapohitaji baraka zako mchana wa leo tunahitaji mfalme wa ajabu tumenenewa yale mambo tumenenewa bwana uyatie maanani katika maisha yetu make us your, uh, 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 the doers of your word katika jina la Yesu bwana mtakatifu na mwaminifu na bariki watu wako kwa baraka ambayo umenipe i bless your people i i give you glory my father because you are blessing each one of us in the entire week that we are starting today father guide us protect us tutaenda na magari tutaenda na motorbike tutaenda na my bicycle we shall walk oh god take care of us take care of us kusiwe na mkosi wa wote katika jina la Yesu watakaye kuwa natembea watakaye kuwa manyumbani kusiwe na mkosi wa wote
katika jina la Yesu na sasa baba wa rehema when we meet again on Tuesday on Thursday on Sunday we shall glorify your name thank you Jesus in the midst of us there are others who are sick my prayer dear father i send the word of healing wherever you are katika jina la Yesu naombea mgongo wako pain ambayo iko katika mgongo na ikapithi mikononi mwa Bwana na nena damu ya Yesu na nena vitalita ya Yesu katika jina la Yesu kwa mapigo za Yesu pokea uponyaji katika jina la Yesu asante kwa sababu unatenda hayo in the name of the Lord Jesus shout amen shout again amen